Number 27. A certain hydraulic system is designed to exert a force 100 times as large as the one put into it. Letter A. What must be the ratio of the area of the slave cylinder to the area of the master cylinder? All right, so just um, let me change some of these words a little bit. Master cylinder, uh, let's think about that as the uh, input, okay? Input cylinder. And then whenever you hear the term slave cylinder, just think of that as the uh, output cylinder, all right? So output. So now when you look down at this picture, all right, here this would be the master cylinder, this would be the slave cylinder. I'm just going to try to use the terms input and output. So there's a certain force that's inputted into the system, right? And then there's a certain output force that results, right? Remember this whole hydraulic system, and this is the nature of a hydraulic system, it's filled with fluid, incompressible fluid. Okay, so when you push down on this plunger, right, this one pops up. Okay, why? Well, again, fluid is non-compressible, right? It's uncompressible, incompressible, whatever. And therefore, whatever pressure is created over here underneath the input cylinder, okay, is equal to the pressure put out by the output cylinder. Now, that being the case, that's Pascal's principle, okay? So anytime you hear the term hydraulic system, you know, be aware of the fact that it's Pascal's principle. Therefore, we know that the input pressure has to equal the output pressure, okay? Now, I can expand on these terms, all right? Remember, I'm trying to, um, it says, uh, what must be the ratio of the area, okay, of the slave, uh, meaning the output cylinder to the master, the input. So what I need to now do is try to somehow get area into this, you know, equation, and so I'm going to use that one over there. I'm going to substitute now the input force divided by the input area, okay, would be equal to the output force now over the output area. Now they want us to find, okay, or they tell us, I should say, um, actually, well, it doesn't really matter. We, we can think about it either way. Um, they tell us, though, that the output force here is going to be 100 times as large as the one put into it, okay? That's what the first sentence tells us. What they're telling us then is this ratio. They're saying that the output force relative to the input force is going to be 100 times larger than the input force, right? So it's really 100 over 1, okay? The output force is 100, input force is 1. That means that the output force relative to the input force is 100 times larger. Now, you don't need this 1 down here, right? Dividing something by 1, you just you can get rid of it, right? So essentially, this fraction is equal to 100. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate this equation so that I get this variable on one side, okay? So all I have to do here in terms of my equation is basically bring this down here, right? I'm just going to bring it down there and then bring this on over there. And that's it. Right, voila. So now I have this ratio on the left hand, uh, excuse me, on the right hand side. So now, in other words, I can now substitute in the value of 100 in for this ratio, right? Because that's basically what the problem told me before in the first sentence. And then the question is asking us, what must be, so letter A now, what must be the ratio of the area of the slave to the area of the master? In other words, what must be the area of the output relative to the input? Meaning output over input, output over input, output over input. There it is. Okay. So we got it already. So here it is. I felt like I was going into the twilight zone there with all those boxes. Um, so now that takes care of part A, okay? I'm gonna erase this over here. We're gonna need a little more space. So let's now take a look at uh, part B. Okay, so part B now, it's asking, uh, it says, what must be the ratio of their diameters? Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this equation. A, uh, the area of the output relative to the area of the input is 100 to one, okay, or just equal to 100. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand on the areas. Now remember it's a hydraulic system. You've got circular pistons here. Okay, so therefore, what's the area of a circle? Pi r squared. Right. So we have the pi multiplied by the radius of the output cylinder squared, divided then by pi times the radius of the input cylinder squared, and that still equals 100. OK, 
Okay. Now notice mathematically what happens here, right? The pi's cancel. Okay. So now I can reduce this down to r uh, the output radius divided by the input radius, both squared equals 100. Mathematically speaking, now since these terms are both squared, what I can do is basically, you know, take out the square and I can just divide these two and square the result of that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is say RO over RI squared is equal to 100. The reason why I the reason why I do it this way is because now we can realize, hey, we got this kind of variable under here. It's squared. How do we get rid of the square? Right. We want to find the ratio. I know it says of diameter, but let's first work with the ratio. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> let's first work with the radius. Too many R's. So now square root both sides. Right. What happens as a result? Well, we get now. RO over RI, in other words, the output radius the, or the radius of the output piston relative to the input piston, the radius of the input piston is now square root of 100, which is equal to 10. Okay, so in other words, the output radius piston is 10 times larger than the input radius because this is really over one, right? So voila, that's part B. Okay, now. Part C, by what factor okay, is the distance through which the output force moves reduced relative to the distance through which the input force moves? All right, assume no friction. So now this part is a little trickier. Okay, It's not hard, it's just tricky to think about. So pretend that we're pushing down on the piston here and pretend that the piston will move to this location over here. Okay. So this is the initial stage, and then this was where the piston finally uh, ended, okay? So a certain volume of fluid, right, was displaced now. So whatever volume of fluid um, existed in this region here, right, whatever volume of fluid existed in that region was now displaced to... Where? It was displaced over here now. It was displaced by, well, let me make that a little better. By moving this piston, the output piston up. Now I know it's going over the borders of my hydraulic system, so maybe I should have brought this down a little bit, right? And maybe I will do that. Maybe, maybe I will. Yeah, maybe I will just do that. So we'll bring it down there. So what happens now? This piston moves up, right? So it's going to move up to, let's say, that particular height. Okay. Now, the fluid that it changed by is this amount, this shaded region. Okay. Now, my picture is not to scale. But if you notice, if you're, if you're thinking about where I'm going here, this is the idea that whatever volume that was displaced here, right, I'll call it the input volume or whatever, whatever this volume is, has to equal this output volume. Why? The fluid's incompressible, right? That's why. And there's no friction, okay? It's an incompressible fluid. And therefore, whatever volume I displace over here will show up on this side. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, just take that and run with it now. I mean, don't write it on the paper. Don't run because running won't do you any good. But write it down now. So we have the Input volume will equal the output volume. So let's expand on what's the volume. Well, what, we, what type of what type of volume are we talking about? Is it a sphere? Is it a is it a, a triangular prism? Right? Is it a cube? No, it's a cylinder. So what's the volume of a cylinder? That's pi r squared h. Okay. Now I'm going to just the only difference here is that the uh, this is the input radius, right? And this is going to be the input height. Now, obviously, you might be thinking to yourself, well, this height, right? This height here will not equal this height over here, right? Why? Because it's a larger area, right? I mean, we can kind of see that already, all right? So now this will equal pi times and the output radius squared times the uh, height, the output height, okay? These two, remember, are not equal. Now, in terms of math, right, what can we do here? Let's just get rid of the pi's. Okay, let's simplify the formula. So now we have ri squared times hi will equal ro squared times ho. 
So now, what are we after here? Well, let's go back to letter C and let's read it carefully. It says, by what factor is the distance through which the output force moves reduced? Relative. That's the key word, relative to the distance, okay? So anytime you hear this term relative, whatever, kind, whatever object came before it, right, meaning the output force here, is going to be on the top of your ratio. Whatever comes after the term relative, in terms of the, the, the uh, character here that we're talking about, is input force. So I know that, based on the wording there, I'm solving this equation now, okay, I'm solving this equation now, for H O over H I, output force relative to input force. Okay, now I know it's force, but remember it's not, or I should say output distance relative to input distance. Okay, so we got this now. Okay, so how would I manipulate this equation? All right, such that, and what I'll do here, let's just move this a little bit, one second. Oh no, where'd the eye go? Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Your captain will be with you shortly. All right, so in terms of now, I'm just moving this out of the way. So now in terms of how do we get HO over HI, well, HO is already in the numerator over here, so simply just take the HI, move it across, right? Move it on down across the equal sign. And then take this and move it diagonally down here. And now you have your little ratio here. All right, this is in the numerator. This is in the, oops, this is in the denominator. Right, and I'm just reorganizing it now. So that's all, okay? Now just put your little, put your little things over this, right? Put your little division sign. So here's the ratio, okay? This is what we're looking for, right? That's what we said we wanted. Okay, let's erase this, save a little space. Now, um, realize here that, I mean, we could do this in, uh, you know, in, in a couple of ways, but realize the similarity to what we solved for over here on the right-hand side. Look at this, right? This is RO squared over RI squared was equal to 100. But wait a minute, now I need to know RI over RO. So all it is, is just the, it's just the reciprocal of this, right? We just got to take this and flip it. So remember, if I flip this side, let me put this in a different color. If I flip this side, then what do I have to do to this side? You better flip it too, right? I'm just using this. I know the work is for part B, but I'm just using, we already have it out here, right? I'm looking for something to substitute in here so I can solve my, uh, solve what I need to solve for. So what I'm going to do is take this and flip it and plug it on in, flip. Okay, so now it becomes 1 over 100 will equal HO over HI. And that's it. That's your answer. If you want to find the decimal, just take 1 divided by 100. That's 0.01. Okay, you don't have to, though. 1 over 100 is fine. Decimal, remember, 0.01. And that is all, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so I hope this helped. Give us a hand if you wouldn't mind. That'd be awesome. Hit the subscribe button. Okay, it's awesome if you can. And uh, tell your friends. If they're having a little trouble in physics, we'd love to help them, too. All right. Not really sure why I'm rambling on so much. I'm actually, my mind is very distracted at the moment. However, guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.